Reactive people are slaves of their emotions. Proactive people take charge of their emotions. A reactive person will always find fault with others. A proactive person will say everybody is as they are. Now what should I do about it? What is in my hands? Let me focus upon that. Reactive people will blame the environment. My health is affected because the weather is not good. Proactive people will carry the weather with them. Proactive people will say, no matter what the weather, I can change myself and adjust to it. The way forward then is to be proactive. It will make a 500% difference in your life. Mindset is an internal resource. All of us possess it because we possess a mind. But how to use this mind? What are the mindsets that we can cultivate which will uplift us to success in this life and beyond? is an art, it's a secret that needs to be learnt. Those who learnt it became successful. Even in the mundane field, what to talk of the spiritual. Those who did not were unable to utilize this free resource that God has made available to all of us. So it's in our interest to understand how to tap into the potential of these mindsets. The first mindset is positivity. If you harbor positivity, it will keep you happy. It will improve your health and it will help you in your performance at work. How do we cultivate positivity we discussed? Does anybody remember? By vacating the ego. By understanding that the world is not for me. It is for God. So if my desires are not fulfilled, doesn't matter. Focus on the graces that God has bestowed. I have received a plenty. Thank you, God, for all your kindness. When we are humble, we are grateful. When we are grateful, we are positive. Supposing negative emotions come to our mind. I'm annoyed, I'm frustrated. And these emotions tend to stick to us. They become our mood. Swamiji, I've been down for the last three days. My mood is off. That means first mindset was positivity. Supposing negativity arises, who is responsible? Swamiji, my neighbor is responsible and my family members are responsible and Trump is responsible and everybody, not me. Wrong. The second mindset is responsibility. Take responsibility for your emotions. You are the master of your mind. Consider this scenario. You started off late for office and when you hit the highway, one after another drivers were cutting you off, thereby 
creating a further delay for it you to reach office and when you felt that my god i'm going to be late and my boss will be annoyed at me you hit a traffic jam by the time you cleared the neck of the jam you had lost another 15 minutes and when you crossed that point you realized there was no real reason for the jam there was a car parked on the side and everybody who was passing by was turning to look at the car as they say in america the rubber neck traffic jam so you started cursing all the drivers who delayed you further finally when you reached your office building and you came to the elevator the elevator man said sir sorry this lift is full you come in the next round you lost another 3 minutes and when you reached your boss's office he shouted at you so it's natural you got into a bad mood who is responsible for the bad mood all the drivers who cut you off are the people who turned their neck to look at the car or the elevator man who said you come in the next round or the boss who gave you a bit of his mind who is responsible for your bad mood all of them no ultimately we have responsibility for our emotions what is responsibility the ability to respond which means that no matter what the external environment you have a freedom to choose how to respond to it it is by exercising this freedom that people elevate themselves very often we don't realize that gap between the external environment and our internal response so when somebody say does something bad to us and we get into a bad mood we think naturally i have to get into a bad mood because somebody did something bad to me but we don't realize there is a gap no matter what anybody did to us our response is our own choice for we are human beings we are not computer programs unfortunately modern western psychology has presented this programmed model you know the pavlov's experiments ivan pavlov very famous some of you must have read them in psychology etc he was actually trying to measure the amount of saliva that dogs generate when they eat so when the food would be brought a bell would also ring and the dog would be brought and then when the food would be fed he would measure the saliva but over the course of a few days the scientist mr pavlov he discovered that even when the food is not brought the ringing of the bell creates the dog to salivate so he realized that the dog has gotten conditioned the bell has conditioned the dog based on this psychologists like sigmund freud etc presented their theories so sigmund freud who's considered the father of psychoanalysis presented a very dismal theory he said we were programmed in our childhood when we experience the impulses to excrete to control excreta to control the sex impulse etc we got programmed and the way we got programmed is the way we are we really can't do much about it according to sigmund freud so there are many theories of determinism one of these theories states genetic determinism why are you always getting angry swamiji it is in my genes 
I am, you know, Irish or I am so and so. So this is how I have been programmed. It's not my fault. It's my grandfather's fault. So genetic determinism blames our nature on the genes. Then there is psychic determinism. Those who are votaries of psychic determinism say it's not my grandfather's fault, it's my father's and mother's fault. The way they brought me up, that is how I am. You know, my father used to scold me so much, that is why I lack self-confidence, Swamiji. It is all my father's fault, it's not my fault. This is psychic determinism. And then there is environmental determinism. Environmental determinism states that it is all the environment. The economy is not doing well and that is why my mood is miserable. Or the wrong party which I did not vote for got into power and that is why I am having all my problems, etc, etc. In other words, it's the environment which is to blame. So all these kinds of deterministic theories miss out on one fundamental point. We are human beings. Animals can get programmed. Human beings have been endowed with the free will to choose their programming. We can change the programs. God has blessed us with a free will, the freedom of choice. Why has God given us all a free will? Because He has created us to love Him. Love is only possible where there is the ability to choose. If we didn't have this ability, there would be no scope to love God. A machine cannot love. Because God wants us to love Him, He gives us the freedom of choice. That freedom you have at every moment. Besides that, we humans are blessed with the faculty of self-awareness. I know I am getting negative emotions. I can be aware of them. Animals may not. God has endowed human beings with the faculty of conscience. The conscience pricks us. This is wrong. God has endowed us with the faculty of self-analysis. With the help of all of these, we can change every program, whether it was a genetic program or an environmental program. We can always choose how to respond. When we understand this freedom we have, then we are no longer slaves to the mind. We have the ability to force the mind to surrender. Oh my dear mind, I will not think the way you want. I will make you think the way I want. An example of this gap between the environment and the response was revealed in a most dramatic way by an author of the last century called Viktor Frankl. Has anybody heard of Viktor Frankl? He's a very famous author. He wrote a book called The Search for Meaning in Life. What happened to him was extremely tragic. Viktor Frankl was a Jew living in Vienna, Austria. And he was a psychologist. He even communicated with Sigmund Freud. And some of his papers were published by Sigmund Freud, which means he was so competent in his work. However, when Hitler went on a rampage and started throwing the Jews 
in Europe into concentration camps. Viktor Frankl along with his family, his two brothers, his wife and his daughters was thrown into the worst of the concentration camps which was the Auschwitz concentration camp. There he suffered extreme torment. He was separated from his wife and daughters and later on came to know they had gotten killed. He describes the conditions in that camp. He would be walking through the night without clothes, not knowing where he was going and whether he would live in the morning or not. However, through this worst possible torment, Viktor Frankl realized that he has one freedom which nobody can take away from him. The freedom to choose his own moods, the freedom to choose his own ambitions. And he said, I choose to be happy. I choose to be peaceful. As he exercised that freedom to control his mind, he decoupled himself from the environment and found himself to be free. He would now be laughing and smiling and the others, the guards, the other inmates would say, what are you laughing about? He said, it's my own choice. He became an inspiration for all the prisoners there. Even the guards took inspiration from him. He decided to live through this ordeal so that when he would finally be released, he would announce to the world his discovery of the freedom of choice. At the end of the world war, when he was released, he went to Israel and he began practicing psychology again. He established his own school called Logotherapy. And the book he wrote, The Search for Meaning in Life, got translated in 15 languages around the world. He traveled and spoke in 209 universities and he was felicitated as honorary doctor by 29 of them. So, Bad things do happen in life. I am sure they have happened to you. I am sure people have mistreated you. I am sure sometimes the world has been unjust. I am sure very often your merit has not been recognized. There have been times when you've been besieged by ill health or badly treated by your close relative for whom you did so much with love. It is very often that life serves you with a lemon, a bitter lemon. But how do you respond to it? Do you become bitter inside or do you make a lemonade out of it? Those who became successful in life, it's not that they did not have their share of lemons. Take a look at the saints of India. Surdas was blind, but he did not go around cursing God that why is it I am blind while everybody else can see. Mirabai was a widow. She did not curse that how has destiny treated me. Everybody is having the happiness of family life and I don't have a husband. Kabir Das was of unknown parentage. Tulsi Das, whose Ramayana is so famous, he was attacked and almost killed. His Ramayana was stolen. The same happened with the saints in the Western world. Jesus was hanged. Muhammad was thrown out of Mecca. So everybody in this world is offered their share of lemons. But the art of successful living requires that we respond positively to these share of lemons. We understand the gap between what happens to us and how we respond to it. And we utilize that gap. 
Now this is very often a revelation to most of us because we have not used that freedom and that's why we've always felt that everything else is to blame for my bad moods. Why are you in a bad mood? Swamiji, it is this, it is that, it is this. Our mind makes a hundred stories. You know, as Swamiji's, unfortunately, we have to keep on counseling everybody. And everybody comes with their problems. And 95% it is all the stories the mind makes. Swamiji, I am unhappy because of this and this and this. And I say, look, you don't have to be unhappy. Everybody has their share of lemons. You choose to be happy. That is a choice that you make. So take responsibility for your emotions. And don't pass the buck to the environment. This is, you know, like the politician who got elected. And after being elected, he engaged in corruption. When he was caught and brought to court, the judge said, what is this? The public, they invested their responsibility in you and you should have observed some ethical standards. You violated them all with such unethical conduct. You should be punished. The politician said, Your Honor, it's not my fault. It's the fault of the public that elected me. That is passing the buck. It is not my fault. My emotions are not my fault. Once, there was a company that was manufacturing dog food. And it was not doing well. So the marketing manager, he called all his entire staff of 27 salesmen. He said, how is the product that our company sells? They said, boss, it is the top in the market. The sales manager then asked his salesmen that how is the slogan that we use? They said it could not be better. What do you say about the packing and the label on it? Oh, it's exceptionally designed. What about our marketing campaign? Superb. What about the distribution system? It could not be better. So the sales manager said, then why is it that we are not in the top of the competition? Why are we at the bottom of the competition? Why are we having the last bit of market share? The salesman said, it is all the fault of the dogs. They don't eat that damn product. <laughs> that is exactly the point. Without realizing it, most of us make this mistake. Why am I in a bad mood? It is all his fault and her fault. So, there are two ways to look at it. One is to be proactive and one is to be reactive. Reactive people are slaves of their emotion. Proactive people take charge of their emotions. A reactive person, if you tell him, why have you slowed down in your bhakti? He will say, Swamiji, you know, I don't feel so devotional nowadays. I am waiting for the feelings to come back and then again I'll gain speed. A proactive person will say, it is for me to create devotional feelings. You ask a reactive person, why have you reduced loving your wife now? You know, Swamiji, those sentiments are no longer there. In other words, they feel love is something that has to happen to them. A proactive person will realize, I have to exercise the power of love. A reactive person will always find fault with others. 
a proactive person will say everybody is as they are now what should i do about it what is in my hands let me focus upon that reactive people will blame the environment my health is affected because the weather is not good proactive people will carry the weather with them proactive people will say no matter what the weather i can change myself and adjust to it so the way forward then is to be proactive this will make not a 50% difference in your life it will make a 500% difference in your life because if you have harbored the reactive attitude you will never try to control your mind and if you have started exercising the muscle of proactivity then you will say okay today this negative emotion dropped me down never mind i'll try harder and tomorrow i will not let it drop me down and slowly slowly you will become the master of your mind so remember if you have always been finding faults with others you know it is all my mother in law's fault no it is my daughter in law's fault no it is my nanad's fault because they are responsible for my bad moods there's a good chance it is your own fault if it seems to you that the whole world is stinking the good chance is that your inner emotions are stinking You know what is the most stinking product in the world? Has anybody heard of Limburger cheese? Don't eat it ever unless you have a great resistance for stinking foods. So, it is a very stinking kind of cheese. Now grandfather was sleeping and the grandchildren because it was April 1st they thought of a practical prank. they took the limburger cheese and they rubbed it on grandfather's mustache so when grandfather woke up and he sniffed he said what a terrible smell has some rat died in this room so he went to check the shelves the every shelf he opens it's smelling but there is no rat He says maybe this wood is porous as far as the smell is concerned dead rat or dead squirrel could be there he checked out every crevice in the room but he could not find the source of the smell yet it is stinking he said let me check the living room the living room is also stinking he said is this smell coming from the outside now he went out to check and he took a deep breath Oh my god such a gush of awful odor the whole world is stinking <laughs> Look I've met hundreds of people in their mind the whole world is stinking Everybody is bad and you uh, Swami ji I am perfect <laughs> But the problem is if it seems to you that the whole world is stinking I would lay my bet that your inside is stinking. It's like that lady who would always criticize the neighbor. And she would keep telling her husband, "Look, my neighbors they have cleaned the clothes and they are hanging on the clothes line, but they are totally dirty. They don't have any sense of cleanliness and look at their walls. How terribly stained their walls is and their car has also got dirt on it." and the husband would just nod yes 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 until one day she got up and she looked out and she said oh my their clothes are so clean today the walls are also clean the car is also clean what happened the husband said my dear wife i cleaned our window panes It was not the neighbor's dirt it was the dirt on her own window panes 
Similarly, if we go around finding fault with everything, we had better be careful. Because it's the fact, if it seems to us that the fault is on the outside, this thought is the biggest fault. Because that thought will prevent you from going upwards. You will always say, my defects are because of others. And if you take charge of your mind, no matter what anybody does, I am responsible for my thoughts. Then you see how you will start improving in life. So this is the mind set for success responsibility for your emotions, for your mindsets.